Hare Krishna. So I'm happy to be with you again for uh, the last chapters of the fourth canto. And Recording in progress. Today we will discuss chapter 29 of canto 4, talks between Narada and King Pradshinabari. This is a long chapter. We will spend four to five lessons only on this chapter. That uh, it says many, many important points. As preparation, I heard all the presentations of Bhujan Prabhu on this chapter, and I noted down all the important points he said. He said, yeah. In his, that uh, I've been busy with, uh, with this chapter 29 for one month, whole month of January. I was into this chapter. And now, finally, I'm with you to present it. That, uh, Om Ajyana Timandasya Chinansala Shnakaya Saksha Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Siga Venama Namon Vishnu Padakas Nepestaya Bhutali Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tanamani Namaste Sarasvata Devi Gauravani Pacharini Nirvisesha Sunyavadi Paskachai Desartarini So come to 4 chapter 29 talks between Narada and King Prachinabari. So King Prachinabari has heard the story of Puranjan. The story of Puranjan, it was chapter 28 and the chapters before that uh, the whole story how the uh, how Puranjan got entangled in material life. Not. But King Prachinabari, he heard this story, but he has not captured the meaning of every element in the allegory. Therefore, in the first text of the 29th chapter, he says, Prajinabari is speaking. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Prajinabari Uvacha Bhagavam Stevachosmabir Nasamyach avakam yate kavayas tat vijanati nasvayam kamamoita. Can someone read the translation on the screen, please? Kripachina Pari replied, My dear Lord, we could not appreciate completely the purport of your allegorical story of King Purash Puranjana. Actually, those who are perfect in spiritual knowledge can understand. But for us who are overly attached to fruitive activities, to realize the purpose of your story is very difficult. Yeah. We may not forget King Prajinabari. He heard the story from the beginning till the end. But not like we heard it. We studied the purports that, uh, but then in text two, Narada begins to explain different points of the analogy. Narada vacha purusam puranja nam vitya yat vyanaktyat manaparam ekat vitri satuspadam Prabhupadam Apadakam. Can someone read the translation? Uh, 
<coughs> the Vedas say it's now the money continued. You must understand that Puranjan, the living entity, transmigrates according to his own work into different types of bodies, which may be one-legged, two-legged, three-legged, four-legged, many-legged, or simply legless. Transmigrating into these various types of bodies, a living entity, as the so-called enjoyer, is known as Puranjana. So we see here now that Narada begins to explain the different points of the analogy. He wants to make clear to, to King Prachinabari what he wishes from him. The points explained here in text 2 are already assimilated in the purports. Ghosts and trees are considered one legged. So the so called enjoyer as Puranjana. So this is one of the main points in the allegory. The living entity is trying to enjoy this material world that we heard in, we, we know from Bhagavad Gita 13.22 Posa pagati stoe bhunkte pagati jan gunan karnam gunasangrasya sarasatyani jan masam So this is a common element for the all conditioned souls in the material world. They are and attempting to enjoy themselves in the material energy. So this tendency to enjoy the material world are so subtle and are difficult to give up. To simply become a servant of Krishna is so difficult in this world because the complexity of the material energy as much made by Krishna the, to bound us, yeah, because this material energy is made by Krishna. It's, uh, it, Krishna says, Mama Mayudarachaya, very difficult to overcome. Because it's there to bound, to bound us and to disallow our escape from this material world. So the first subtle covering over the soul is ahankar, false ego. <coughs> and that is more or less a sense of enjoyership in this world. <coughs> and it is amazing how if one possesses that sense of enjoyment, enjoyment, enjoyership, that sense of enjoyership, one can turn everything spirit spiritually basic, basically into something material. <laughs> that, that's what we are doing. We can turn the holy name in something material, but we can try to exploit the holy name or anything for our own pleasure, like we are the center. So this has to be removed from our heart. As long as we do not give up the false sense of enjoyership, we cannot be happy in the material world. And as explained in this allegory, we cannot enter into the spiritual atmosphere if we try to enjoy in gross or subtle ways. The living entity, regardless of his body, the conditioned soul is trying to enjoy in the material atmosphere. So, so the conditioned soul is the one who is Puranjan. And according to his attempt in how Maya is entangling him, he acquires some karma and the forces of material nature award him under the superintendence of the Lord, Deva, Karma Naitrena in the third canto we heard. Under the supervision, the superintendence of the Lord who awards him a material body. And then we make another attempt to manipulate the energy of ourselves as enjoyment. And it is fruitless. Fruitless means it doesn't come. Srila Prabhupada said it is rascaldom. Srila Papa talked to a Swedish psychologist and asked, 
Wat is raskeldom? <laughs> Dan Sheila Popout gave his definition. It is foolishness. We can't enjoy the material world because this is a place of repeated birth and death. And, and everything is always ch changing in the world. We long for security and everything in our life is going to be crushed. Like Puranjan, the whole city is going to be de demolished and turned into powder and dust. <coughs> Just particles of sand. Everyone in this world beginning with the body. This is a very frightening face in fact. But it is reality. A re reality should be faced. If we try to avoid it, then it will chase us. Because it is real. Illusion you can avoid, but reality is unavoidable because it is reality. <laughs> Watch out this point of the living entity trying to enjoy. The rascal idea is to enjoy. It comes up again and again. This is the purpose of this allegory. To convince and detach us from the spirit of enjoyment. Which is due to the body concept of life. <laughs> the body concept of life makes us act through karma. Which leads us to the next body. So this is going on. This going on and on and on. My body I had 20 years ago is different from the body I have now. But I'm clearly the same person. Why just assuming? Because when the body dies, that also the soul dies. Why just assuming this? It is ignorance. That just of illusion we think that the body is me. The illusion is due to the influence of the material modes of nature, which is one aspect of Maya, the ingredient aspect, Upadantara. Just note the occurrence of this concept of the enjoyer, and that this story is meant for us to give up this enjoying spirit. A fruitless attempt. It will bring us, it will not bring us what we want. It is like planting a tree. Planting a tree is a fruitive work. <laughs> right? The whole purpose to plant a tree is to get the fruit. But the tree is not going to produce any fruit. It has to be fruitless. The purpose of planting the tree is to get the fruit, but if an intelligent person knows that the tree is not going to produce any fruit, then he thinks, why put energy into it? So only a foolish person will proceed with something knowing that his objective will not be fulfilled. The purpose of the allegory is to strengthen our conviction that to enjoy in the, in the world is a fruitless attempt leading only to suffering. That, uh, can someone read the translation of text number three? Hare Krishna. Thank you. The person I have described as unknown is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Master and Eternal Friend of the Living Entity. Since the Living Entities cannot realize the Supreme Personality of Godhead by material names, activities or qualities, he remains everlastingly unknown to the conditioned soul. Okay. So the Lord cannot be conquered by our material senses. Not by the senses, not by the mind or our material intelligence. Although one can perceive the Supreme Lord in the heart, 
to pious intelligence perceive his form and qualities. So the conditioned souls who are relying on the as ascendant met method, ascendant method, going up on one's own power and knowledge, they cannot know him. Therefore is the unknown friend mentioned here. Although he's unknown, still he's a friend, he remains a friend. When the living entity wants to enjoy the material modes, in their totality rule over the material world to enjoy, then he accepts the material body. That, uh, then text 4. Summary the translation of text 4. Hare Krishna. Please. Okay. When the living entity wants to enjoy the modes of material nature in their totality, he prefers, out of many bodily forms, to accept that body which has nine gates, two hands, and two legs. Thus, he prefers to become a human being or a demigod. So, it means he wants to enjoy. He wants to enjoy and prep then prefer, pref, the, 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 this is prefer, preferable body for enjoyment. What is this more preferable body? It's the human body. Although the human body gives greater facilities for enjoyment, it places one into birth and death. This is so hard for the conditioned soul to accept. There will be no situation in the material world that will please me. Therefore, neither attachment nor envy are of any value. If I get what someone else has, I still won't be happy. Unless one realizes that one cannot progress very much. He must overcome this subtle or gross concept of enjoying in this material world. I'm contaminated with passion and ignorance, and there must be a situation in which I can advance, in which I can get rid of my material desires and develop love for Krishna. The human birth gives facility for the greatest amount of enjoying the material world. That, uh, Text 5. Summary text 5. Translation. The great sage Narada continued, The word pramada mentioned in this regard refers to material intelligence or ignorance. It is to be understood as such. When one takes shelter of this kind of intelligence, he identifies himself with the material body. Influenced by the material consciousness of I and mine, he begins to enjoy and suffer through his senses. Thus the living entity is entrapped. Entrapped living entity. That, uh, another word for material intelligence. What is material intelligence? It's ignorance. <laughs> That's what it is. Because why? It entangles us in the material energy. It makes a plan, this material intelligence. And if you succeed in your plan, you fail as you become more and more entangled in the material energy. So it binds and forces you into further and deeper suffering. Material and intel intelligence is a delusion, ignorance. It has to be understood as such that uh, material intelligence means I'm my body <coughs> and all what I possess is mine. <coughs> so if someone becomes a powerful enjoyer, what does the material energy immediately create? An enemy, a person who hates you. You have immediately a competitor, 
someone who tries to pull you down. This is the incredible material nature. The bigger you become, the bigger your enemies you become. That. Is this a pleasant place? Is it a pleasant place where this is a law? <laughs> That's a good question. The conclusion that we need to reach is, no, I don't want to be here. But not just to get out, I want to go to a place where these material laws are not active. This place is called Vaikuntha and Goloka Vindavan. If one goes there, then one is automatically liberated. We shouldn't try to fix the material world, try to adjust it. We should not try to fix our situation in the material world. It will, it will always be the way just as it is. Competition, fighting, friends and enemies, that uh, we must be willing to cut the attachment and get out of it. In chapter 15 of the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, cut your attachment to this tree, this banyan tree. Cut it with knowledge and detachment. Because it won't give us what we want. It will give us the opposite of what, he, what we want. It is important that we hear these topics again and again. So repetition on this point is important. One day we will hardly get it. So our, this, is, this concerns our subtle and our gross attachments. So we need to preach to our mind, to our intelligence. Because we can't go upward spirit spiritually until these things, their gross and subtle attachments are removed. The false concepts of what I am and what is truly uh, mine, what is truly mine. So, mm. so in the purport he said, in the material, in, in material existence, so-called intelligence is actually ignorance. When intelligence is cleared up, it is called buddhi yoga. In other words, when intelligence is dovetailed with the desires of Krishna, it is called Buddhi yoga or bhakti yoga. When our intelligence is used not in satisfying, in satisfying our own sense gratification, but to please Krishna, it is different. That, uh, so, therefore, in Bhagavad Gita, then, then Krishna says, and that's here. Tesam sata yuktam vachyam pita bhukam dadami buddhi yuktam ye namam upayam tite. That. Uh, so those who are constantly devoted and worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me, by which one can return back to God. It. So the mind is so tricky in this regard. It will arrange things in such a way that we will appear to be the center of existence. That, uh, so this is further here. Intelligence in the material world is described in this verse, in this verse as pr Pramada, because in the material existence the living entity falsely claim things to be his. That it thinks I'm the monarch 
and of all I survey. So, this little sentence here in the purport explains the concept of the false eye and mind. But this mind, everything I see, this is ignorance. And what is the proof? When I leave this world, I leave everything I survey as mine behind. That, uh, so, yes, actually, nothing belongs to him. So even the body and the senses do not belong to him. For they are given by the grace of the Lord to satisfy the different propensities through the material energy. Nothing actually belongs to the living entity. But he comes mad after everything, claiming this is mine, this is mine, this is mine. Yanas, Yamoyam, Amamamete. Shimad Bhagatam 558, that we will see in the next canto, teachings of King Rishabhadev. And he defines that this is illusion. Nothing belongs to the living entity. That, uh, but he claims that everything belongs to him. That, uh, so, this is, yeah, everything belongs to him. Lord Chaitanya recommends that this false intelligence be purified, Seto Darpana Marginum. When the mirror of, in, of intelligence is polished, the real activities of the living entity begin. This means that when a person comes to the platform of Krishna consciousness, his real intelligence acts. At that time, he knows everything belongs to Krishna and nothing belongs to him. <clears throat> as long as one thinks that everything belongs to him, he is in material consciousness. And when he knows perfect that everything belongs to Krishna, he is in Krishna consciousness. <laughs> So the pure sense of mind, what is the pure sense, the real, real sense of mind, is I belong to Krishna. I'm Krishna's servant. That's our real mind. I want something to possess. When I'm Krishna's and Krishna is mine, with no material selfish contamination, when we have that consciousness, we go to Goloka Vrindavan. So sadhus, they are living very simply. As they, they, they do not want to become attached and think this is mine. But the greatest sense of attachment is Anasaktasya Vishyam Yatartam Upanyum Yata. Nirbanda Krishna Sambande Yukta Varahyam Uchate. Is that of nothing is mine, better is everything is Krishna's and should be used in Krishna's service. <coughs> this is Niskinsana Bhakti. <coughs> when we are in the mood, in this mood, it can possess the entire universe and not be contaminated. He remains in a position as a servant. Narada Muni continues to explain the basic elements of the story and what they mean here. That, uh, can someone read the translation of text 6? Hare Krishna. The five working senses and the five senses that acquire knowledge are all male friends of Ranjani. The living entity is assisted by these senses in acquiring knowledge and engaging in activity. The engagements of the senses are known as girlfriends, and the serpent, which was described as having five heads, is the life air acting within the five circulatory processes. Mm -hmm. So now... We have text. We have all these senses and etc. <clears throat> and they are trying to give enjoyment to that conditioned soul. 
Puran Can. Does the essence here? Text seven. Can someone read the translation? Hare Krishna. The eleventh attendant, who is the commander of the others, is known as the mind. He is the leader of the senses, both in the acquisition of knowledge and in the performance of work. The Panchala kingdom is that atmosphere in which the five sense objects are enjoyed. Within that Panchala kingdom is the city of the body, which has nine gates. Mm -hmm. Yes, in the purport, it's about the mind. The mind is the center of all activities and is described as Briyat Bala, very powerful. <coughs> To get out of the clutches of Maya material existence, one has to control his mind. So one has to control his mind. And what, what did Arjun say that, uh, about controlling the mind? He spoke about controlling the mind. He said it's very difficult. That uh, the mind is obstinate. It's chancala flickering. It's more difficult than controlling the wind. It's very difficult because what's the mind's business? The mind's business is accepting, accepting, rejecting. And one has to break this concept of false ego, that false concept of the self, the holding of the mind for things to sense gratification. The mind always goes where it's attached to that uh, sense gratification. So the rules and regulations of Vaidhi Bhakti, the rules and regulations we follow, regulated principles, things to do, things not to do, that, that these are the regulations of Vaidhi Bhakti, 64 items of devotional service explained by Rupa Goswami in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. This is the Vaidhi Bhakti, the rules and regulations. They are there. But if we listen to our mind, if we listen to our mind, then we accept a different authority. My mind does not feel like doing this today. I don't want to do that. Running, we are running here and there for enjoyment, scrolling on the internet, so many things that, uh, and, we, and the mind puts, sich, puts itself under different control, not, not under the control of Guru, Sardo and Shastra, that, uh, but According to the training, the purport, the mind is the friend or the enemy of the living entity. So, of course, that's also explained in Bhagavad Gita. Udrat Atman Atman Atmanam Avasadiyat Atmevya Atmanam Yeah, Udrat Atman Atman Atmanam Avasadiyat Atmevya Atmanam I got the verse, yeah, with the mind you can uplift yourself or degrade yourself. The mind can be your enemy or can be your friend. It's Udrat Atman 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 Avasadyat Atmevi Atmanavs Bandur Atmevaripur Atmana. And then it says in Bhagavad Gita, Bandhu Atmatmana Stasya, Yanatmana Atmana Ajitya, Yanatmana Atu Satrit Vevakta Tatma Eva Satrivat. When one has conquered the mind, the mind is the best of friend, and when it's unconquered, it's the greatest enemy. It's a friend, the mind, when it is attached to Krishna. It's an enemy when it's attached to enjoyment, higher or lower. So King Prachina Bari said, he was 
attached to higher forms of life. We want to go to the heavenly planets. But higher or lower, still an enemy. That, uh, that. So, we can continue the eating the purport. If one gets a good manager, his and his, his estate is very nicely managed. But if the manager is a thief, his estate is spoiled. So, so similarly, in in his material conditional existence, living entity gives power of attorney to his mind. Power of attorney. What does this mean? We give power of attorney to the mind. When you sign a legal document, this person can give, I give the power to take decisions on my behalf. In the same way we give the, then the person has the full legal right to make decisions on my behalf, just as I'm deciding it. And that's what we are doing. We say, my dear mind, whatever you decide, my dear mind, I accept as me. You want something, I want it. You are averse to something, I'm averse from it. This is full identification with the mind. And that's what it means, conditioned. It's madness. Only a devotee is saying that he doesn't give a tone to the mind. But all conditioned souls are tone to the mind. So imagine if your mind is going wild, that uh, this is a material world. How to make your mind go out of control? You see people in the street, hairstyles, hair like the, the punks of <laughs> green hair. <laughs> so, a to the mind. It is insanity of a, of a wild mind. It makes fools of individuals. That, uh, that's what Burijan said, punkers or acid heads. <laughs> so this is Kali Yoga. And this is ignorance. So the cure for ignorance is knowledge. That, uh, it's knowledge, the cure for ignorance. That, uh, so we read the rest of the purport here. As such, he is liable to be misdirected by his mind into enjoying sense objects. Shila Ambarish Maharaj therefore, therefore first engages his mind upon the lotus feet of Krishna. So, why mana Krishna Padara Vindaya? That's uh, an important memorization first from the ninth canto for the Bhaktivedanta course. When the mind is engaged in meditation on the lotus feet, the senses are controlled. The system of control is called Yama, and this means subduing the senses. Or who can subdue the senses is called the Gosvami. But one who cannot control the mind is called Godas. The mind directs the activities of the senses, which are expressed to different outlets, as, uh, as described in the next verse. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, uh, so from text 8 till 17 here, Narada Muni con continued to uh, describe what the eyes are, are and what the ears are. We heard that already, so we 
we heard that already before in the previous chapter. So we jump to text 18 to 20 now. And there we will have an explanation of different points. So we go to verse 18, 20. Eighteen twenty. Can someone read the translation, please? Please. Now the moon continued. What I refer to as the chariot was in actuality the body. The senses are the horses that pull the chariot. As time passes, year after year, these horses run without this obstruction, but in fact they make no progress. Pious and impious activities are the two wheels of the chariot. The three modes of material nature are the chariot's flags. The five types of life air constitute the living entity's bondage, and the mind is considered to be the row. Intelligence is the chariot driver. The heart is the sitting place in the chariot. And the dualities of life, such as pleasure and pain, are the knotting place. Mm -hmm. Seven elements are the coverings of the chariot, and the working senses are the five external processes. The eleven senses are the soldiers. Being engrossed in sense enjoyment, the living entity seated on the chariot hankers after fulfillment of his false desires and runs after self and sense enjoyment life after life. Yeah. So it says what I refer to as the chariot, chariot, Chariot was in actually the body. The senses are the horses that pull the chariot. As time passes, year after year, these horses run without obstruction. But in fact, they are making no progress. So this, they are running and running, and they are going nowhere. That, uh, like the sense gratification, that's always the same thing. The same thing, eating, sleeping, and so on. That um, and uh, the chariot runs. But it's like the wheels of a car stuck in the snow. The wheels move, but the car is not moving. So they are in illusion that they are making progress. Paxisidanta Sarasvati Thakur would tell the story of a, of a marriage procession. <laughs> they went into a boat, that's uh, so a whole marriage procession. They were on their way to a procession. To, uh, uh, it was a procession to go to the other side of the river to attend the marriage. Of course, Indian marriages, we know that takes a few days. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just one day, different days. That, uh, so they went into the boat to go to the other side, and the boatman, boatman was rowing the entire night. It was very dark. And, but the next day, when the, the sun came up, they were in, in exactly the same position, because the boatman neglected to pick up the anchor. So this story is told here by uh, Bhaksidanta Sarasvati Maharaj to tell us that unless we pick up the anchor of our material attachment and want to give up our tendency to, to enjoy the material world, we may work very hard, very hard in spiritual life, but not get anywhere. Another thing is of this type of spinning wheels and running. Prabhupada used to say, the dogs are running on four legs and men are running on four wheels. What's the difference? That, uh, yes, really there is no difference. They are running and running but only after material sense pleasure. That's, they are doing the same thing. That, uh, so, here, 
then further it's it's explained in the translation of the verse here so the pious and impious activities are the two wheels of the chariot the three modes of material nature are the chariot's flags that uh, and we read it already but one hankers after fulfillment of, of his false desires and runs after sense enjoyment in life after life. That, uh, now here the purport I read the first lines. The entanglement of the living entity in sense enjoyment is very nicely explained in these verses. The word samvatsar means the progress of time is, ins is significant. Day after day, week after week, fortnight after fortnight, month after month, year after year, the living entity becomes entangled in the chariot's progress. <laughs> so the Papa said it's like a dog. A dog chasing its own tail. <laughs> that uh, is going around and around and around, but it's not going anywhere. It's not going to get it. <laughs> the circle we go in is a circle of birth and death. It's not progress. It is cyclical ignorance, we can say. Real progress is explained in Bhagavad Gita. One makes real pro progress when one has not to take again a material body. In Chaitanya Charitamrita is, is mentioned. The living entity is wandering throughout this universe in different species on different planets. So this is because of the enjoying spirit. I want to be the enjoyer. Ishvaham Hambogi. We have the tendency to be the Ishvara and the controller. All the attempts for money are that we can be the Ishvara, the enjoyer. So we should pray to the Lord to banish the spirit of enjoyment from our heart. Subtly and gross and that instead of the spirit of ser that instead the spirit of servitorship to Krishna should arise from our heart. Krishna says, How can I serve you? This was Srila Prabhupada's definition of the yeah, of the Ma Mantra. His definition, very simple. Please engage me in your service. That's the mood. A sincere calling of the soul as a baby, but not a calling to be free from the miseries of the material uh, existence, but a calling, please let me serve you, please accept me as your servant. Please banish this false desire that I can be the enjoyer. We pray to Lord Nishinga Dev that by his mercy this can happen. That's So even if it takes a cursing of our attempts, we must accept this cursing as Krishna's mercy. Srimad Bhagavatam 10.88.8, that's the example always given there. Yasyaman rinami arishyatatanam sanai tatudam teantyasya svajjana dukadukidam. I'm going to give you my mercy, Krishna says. When I give you my mercy, I take everything, I take away all the wealth you are attached to, sanai, gradually. So if I especially favor someone, I gradually deprive him from his wealth. Then the relatives and friends of such a poverty-stricken man abandon him. In this way he suffers one distress after another. 
So you may also have experienced in your life. You want to give things up, but you can't. It's, it, it's like you are embracing a tree and you say to the tree that let me go, let me go, let me go. Of course, then a sadhu comes, a spiritual master, and says, oh, it's, you are holding on the tree, you must let, let it go. That, uh, so it's so difficult sometimes. That, but, uh, but when Krishna is, is his mercy, Krishna will take away what you are attached to. Flop, everything gone. <laughs> <laughs> that, and suddenly you are a poor guy you lost everything but that's Krishna's mercy then you suffer to never suffer again you let it go that uh, so that's in the purport real progress is explained in Bhagavad Gita 4.9 one makes real progress when, when he does not have to take another material body. And this is this verse from the Chaitanya Saritamrita. That, uh, so real progress factually is getting out of this material world altogether, Srila Prabhupada says. Then we go to the last lines of this uh, purport that uh, so it's in these verses the words Mrigati Sam Pradavati Pradavati are very significant because the living entity influenced by thirst for sentient enjoyment is like a deer that goes to the desert to search out water for water. In the desert an, an animal simply searches in vain for water. Of course there is no water in the desert. An animal simply sacrifices his life in an attempt to find it. Everyone is planning for future happiness, thinking that somewhere or other he can reach a certain point, he will be happy. In actually, however, we come to that point, we see there is no happiness. He then plans to go further and further to one another point. That is called Mrigya Trishna, and it's the basis and its basic sense enjoyment in the material world. Hmm. So, yes, this word, Mriha Trishna, Mriha Trishni Pradavanti, that every event is influenced by this thirst for sense enjoyment. I want to enjoy because I think. I'm the body. That uh, it's like a deer in the desert. We heard here in the purport. So it, it, this is very graphic, graphically stated. That uh, we'll read a few verses before we have a break. Twenty-one. Can someone read twenty-one? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, go on. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. What was previously explained as Chandvega, Chandvega, powerful time is covered by the days and nights named Gandharvas and Gandharvis. The body's lifespan is gradually reduced by the passage of days and night, which number 360. Right. Text 22. Can someone read 22? What was described as Kalakanya should be understood as old age, 
no one wants to accept old age but yavaneshwara yavana raja who is death accept jara old age as his sister okay 2325 can someone read the translation hare krishna hare krishna the followers of yavaneshwara yamaraj are called the soldiers of death and they are known as the various types of disturbances that pertain to the body and mind brajvara represents the two types of fever extremely heat and extremely cold dipoit and pneumonia the living entity lying down within the body is disturbed by many tribulations pertaining to providence uh to other living entities and to his own body and mind <clears throat> despite all kinds of tribulations the living entity subjected to the necessities of the body mind and senses and suffering from various types of disease is carried away by many plans due to his lust to enjoy the world although transcendental to this material existence the living entity out of ignorance accepts all these material miseries under the pretext of false egoism i and mine in this way he lives for a hundred years within this body yes not uh tribulations which the living entity on the goes are described here and we will discuss this after the break we will now have a break for 10 minutes it is now 6:27 so 6:40 30 minutes from now we start again then we will go to verse 28 and conclude this section and then have a discussion so thank you recording stopped Hi Krishna so recording in progress we will continue so in text 2325 the all these tribulations that the living entity undergoes are described that we know from Bhagavad Gita Adi Bodhika Adi Atmika Adi Devika Adi Bodhika is difficult is giving to us by, by other living entities <laughs> that uh, Adi Atmika all the difficulties from the body that Adi Devika earthquakes and heat cold the two material natures controlled by the devas the demigods but all these tribulations that the living entities undergo they are due to their own karma it's one's own providence one's own fate it's not easy to accept one's providence providence of fate that uh, so we will 
go to the purport and read the last paragraph. Knowing the basic misery of material existence, one should be induced to get out of the material clutches and return home back to God. Actually, the living entity is not at all happy in this material world, in this material body. Because of the body suffers thirst and hunger and is influenced by the mind, by words, by anger, by the belly, by the genitals, by the rectum and so on. Manifold miseries encircle the transcendental living entity simply because he desires to satisfy his senses in this material world. If he simply withdraws from activities of sense gratification and applies his senses to the service of the Lord, all the problems of material existence will immediately diminish. And with the advancement of Krishna consciousness, he will be freed from all tribulation and after giving up this body will return back to Godhead. So this is the point. We should become convinced of the basic misery of the material existence. We hear it so much. But are we acting according to this knowledge? No. Because we are still attached. We did not really accept it. The mind says, I want, I want it, and it pulls it out, uh, it, it, the mind says, I want it, and it pulls it, its paper, power of attorney. <laughs> that, the, the mind says, you and I are one. <laughs> but no, when I'm convinced of the basic misery of the material existence, we need to be convinced. We need to preach to the mind. And that's the purpose of the intelligence. That, uh, so one should be induced to get out. That, uh, yes. Therefore, one should not really conclude. Trying to satisfy my senses in the material world cannot make me happy. And therefore, I'm... I'm not going to try to satisfy my senses in the material world. And that is renunciation of the body concept of life. Yeah. Now, text 26, 27. Can someone read the translation, please? The living entity by nature has minute independence to choose his own good or bad fortune. But when he forgets his Supreme Master, the Personality of Godhead, he gives himself up to the modes of material nature. Being influenced by the modes of material nature, he identifies himself with the body and for the interest of the body becomes attached to various activities. Sometimes he is under the influence of the mode of ignorance, sometimes the mode of passion and sometimes the mode of goodness. The living entity thus gets different types of bodies under the modes of material nature. So yes, sometimes we feel so controlled by the modes and by our karma that we think we may not have any independence. But we do, because otherwise what would be the purpose in giving such kind instruction if there wasn't freedom? So we have, we have, we have some small freedom. And, uh, and Last year I was in uh, New Mayapur in France and I spoke with Gop Gopa Swami Prabhu, he's one of the first disciples of Prabhupada in France and he's a medical doctor and I told him you are a doctor that, but if everything is destined by karma, what's the use of your profession? <laughs> that, uh, and he said, yes, but we we have some freedom that uh, we have to suffer, but if we get uh, the right treatment, the right medicine and follow the prescription, we will suffer less. So we have some freedom. Finally, you have to die. So the, the, there is, is only a little freedom, but if we use it properly, we will less suffer. But 
it's no solution at the end. We must get get out. That. Uh, so sometimes we feel so controlled by these modes and by our karma that we think we don't have any independence. But we do, because otherwise, what would be the purpose in giving such kind instruction if there wasn't freedom? We have the freedom to take the instructions and try our best to apply them. So that's our freedom. Otherwise, what would be the use of Krishna giving us these instructions? That, uh, so, one has a minute independence to choose. That, uh, so, when we forget Krishna, then we are put under control of material nature. First one is put in the prison and then the power of attorney is given to the mind. That's what happens. That, uh, so being influenced by the modes of material nature, yes, that uh, he identifies himself with the body, for the interest of the body, and become attached to various activities. Sometimes he's influenced by the mode of ignorance, sometimes by passion, sometimes by goodness. Living entity thus gets different types of bodies under the modes of material nature. That, uh, so, and the result of these different modes according to the karma we have accrued, that's what we get. According to the modes that control us. And now, text 28, the last verse of today. Can someone read the translation? Thank you. Hare Krishna. Those who are situated in the mode of goodness act piously according to Vedic injunctions. Thus they are elevated to the higher planetary systems where the demigods live. Those who are influenced by the mode of passion engage in various types of productive activities in the planetary systems where human beings live. Similarly, those influenced by the mode of darkness are subjected to various types of misery and live in the animal kingdom. Yeah, in the purport, two-third down, Srila Prabhupada writes, at the present moment, human society is overly influenced, influenced by the mode of passion, and consequently, people are engaged in working in big factories. They forget how dis distressful it is to live in such places. In Bhagavad Gita, such activities are described as Uga Karma. This is, that is, distressful activities that uh, those who utilize the energies of the worker are called capitalism and those who actually perform the, the work are laborers and actually they are both capitalists and the workers are in the mode of passion and ignorance. The, work, the result is that they are always distressful in contrast, in, in, in contrast with those influenced by the mode of goodness. The karmis and jnanis. The karmis, under the direction of the Vedic instruction, try to elevate themselves to higher planetary systems. The jnanis to merge into the existence of Raman, the impersonal feature of the Lord. In this way, all living entities in various species are existing in the material world. This explains superior and inferior life forms within the material world that uh, so so at present everyone is overly influenced by the mode of passion and that's the standard economic development production we speak about those were developed countries, and we and, uh, speak about third 
world countries. Third world countries. What are the second world countries and the first world countries? No one uses these terms. That, uh, but it's all defined in terms of production, economic production. So, uh, at present, the human society is overly influenced by the mode of passion and constantly people are engaged in big factories. In another place, Sheila Prabhupada says, factory, factory is hell. That, uh, so Burijan Prabhu tells his experience. Burijan Prabhu is living in Australia. That, uh, for most of the time. So one time he says, I was driving from Melbourne to a town nearby and I passed a huge factory of the Ford Motor Corporation. That, uh, when I was passing at the time, everyone came out of the factory. The shift would change. I saw fa the faces of the people as they would get out of eight hours factory work. There was such misery and suffering on their faces. They weren't even happy to get out, just they were miserable. Miserable, misery, factory, factory means hell. So this point of having a, sh a job in a factory is life in the civilized world. <laughs> even 200 years ago there was no such thing as a job. Creating jobs, that is what the politici politicians promise to do. Jobs, factory jobs, factory means hell. That, uh, so, I don't know, did every, uh, any one of you ever work in a factory? That, uh, no? No experience of working in a factory, someone? That, uh, okay. Then it's uh, it it it's only <coughs> theoretical. <laughs> the Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj was <coughs> while studying in Australia. I worked in factory in Australia, Maharaj. Like it's a packaging factory. Yeah. During my studies. During my studies. Yes, in Melbourne. And and and, and how was it? Was it hell or? <laughs> It is repeated the same job, but it's so tiring. It's so tiring, actually. Tiring. Always the same thing again and again. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, yeah certainly not pleasant. That, uh, not, ple not pleasant at all. No. I made different same kinds of factory. Like a machine, like a machine. Same job, packing, packing, and putting yeah. the same. So, in the model world, yes, everyone is infected with a spirit of enjoyment. So everyone's duty is to serve and bring pleasure, pleasure to the soul. I want now to go back with you. Uh, that uh, moment. Uh, and, uh, well, this is a message of Goloka Vashini Mataji. You want to say say something on behalf of your husband who worked in a factory? Uh, yes, my marriage, he always says that it's very tiring and very demanding. And yeah, uh, yeah people uh, and even more uh, difficult because of the because people are involved in sinful activities all the time. So the company is very the association is very difficult. Very Not so easy. Yeah, especially factories where they produce uh, uh, beer or intoxication or all these things. But, uh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, but now I will go back to the third canto. Third canto. Chapter 25, Kapiladev's Teachings, Glories of Devotion and Service. There we have 
32. Can someone read the translation here, Lord Kapila Dave? Lord Kapila said. The senses are symbolic representations of the demigods and their natural inclination is to work under the direction of the Vedic injunction. As the senses are representatives of the demigods, so the mind is the representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The mind's natural duty is to serve. When the service spirit is engaged in devotional service of, to the Supreme Personality of Godhead without any motive, that is far better than salvation. So bhakti Even is, than salvation. Yeah. Yes. So thank you. Thank you, so bhakti, thank you, bhakti is the stage after salvation, after liberation. So we have heard so much about this point. That uh, so the oneness of the yogi's mind, its fixedness on the Lord is far better. He's liberated, but he has something more than liberation. So, in other words, this is what we may remember from the teachings of Lord Kap Kapiladev that. Devotional service dissolves the subtle body of the living entity without separate effort. It's a side effect. It dissolves and our, our spiritual body becomes active again. Our spiritual mind, our spiritual intelligence, which is now inactive in the conditioned state. So this was the first part of this chapter, the first uh, section. So may I ask you what do you remember of this chapter? What was according you, to you the most important point we had? At least something important that I remember was that the real progress is when we get back to Godhead. Mm -hmm. that, uh, the real progress is as we can go back to Godhead, out of here, right? Mother yes, and Krishna will take away uh, what we are attached to. So that we can make progress. Yeah, Krishna will take away what we are attached to. If uh, that is true, that can happen in two ways. We can subtly take it away if we are too attached to it. Or it can be a gradual process. There is the difficult way or the easy way. The easy way is hearing the Bhagavatam and gradually become detached understanding that uh, the difficulty way is, is if we still don't want to give it up. But we want also to make spiritual progress. And then Krishna takes it away and it's painful. That's more difficult. That, uh, so, thank you, Mother Kanta. Mother Gulok, have a scene, please. Uh, yes, Maharaj. I understood that, uh, like, it's very important to uh, leave the material attachments, like, uh, we understood the story given by Bhakti Siddhartha Saraswati Maharaj. Like, if we don't leave the material attachment, uh, we will not progress 
uh, in spiritual life and the other point uh, i understood that uh, it is not easy to leave the material attachment for that we should pray intensely to the lord so that he can help us in in cutting up our attachments and the other point i understood that it is very very important to control the mind and uh, yes mind yeah if we don't control the mind then um will be nowhere yeah you you have to tell to your mind sorry i take this power of atoni back finished you have to now follow what krishna says that, that, that uh, not easy but that's an important point in controlling the mind we learn here thank you mother goloka vasini nilamani pa please Yes, Maharaj, this section it was a nice review and summary of some of the previous chapters and a very kind of uh, graphic description of the chariot where the living entity is just kind of an innocent passenger and um, the, the wheels represent the pious and impious activities that uh, the living entity is drawn into um by the senses which are the horses um which are driven by the reins which is the mind as as you were just discussing that was a very um um you know um a nice point that uh, somehow um the the living entity gives that power of attorney to the uh, mind and and then the mind can uh, abuse that power of attorney but um hopefully with the right use of the intelligence the mind can be um uh controlled and driven in in the correct way actually um uh, make spiritual progress um which is the ultimate purpose of the chariot and the body especially in this human form of life where um we have this rare a gift and rare opportunity um and if we don't use it uh, appropriately then we lose that opportunity and um, uh force into lower forms of life and have to wait to evolve back into a human form of life so these are some of the things you know that I think I remember which is a very nice review again of you know what we've covered in these previous chapters yeah but what's interesting what you say this yeah man with intelligence we must control this mind that with intelligence that uh, but that intelligence must become realized intelligence that uh, that we uh, we get in the purple the some sort of exam but some people program Adami buddhi yoga tam this buddhi yoga shila paupat gives definition of buddhi yoga buddhi yoga means understanding everything belongs to krishna and we use it in krishna's service so it's it's quite practical what shila paupat says here and uh, we must always live with without understanding and it's not easy to do that in a world where everyone wants to do the opposite <laughs> it's a whole challenge thank you for sharing what you remember shamananda prabhu please ah krishna for me this uh, analogy of giving a uh, power of attorney to the mind was very shocking actually because i imagined for example you sit in a car and then suddenly you realize that the driver uh, falls asleep uh, while driving or is crazy does crazy things uh, so you don't feel very comfortable and actually uh the the example that should have probably gave that you give your valuable company to a ceo and then he mismanages everything and the whole company is uh, you know breaking apart so imagining that i have done that decision you know giving power of attorney to my mind uh, which is uh, who is actually not capable of doing that alone you know it's just if you you give decision power of attorney to a child to decide over your life that's just not done you know you decide for the child and uh, this was very 
yeah, moving for me to um, to see it like that. Yeah, the, this this power of attorney. I must say that the first years that that I practiced Krishna consciousness, the first years, I didn't get that point, and that means neophyte. But from the moment you understand, oh, the mind is cheating me. That then you start to make really progress in spiritual life. Then there's scope to make progress. But for but as long as you identify with this mind, what makes us identify? That's passion and ignorance. So we don't engage in these activities. Stay far away from this passion and ignorance. But passion, influenced by passion and ignorance means you give a tone to it. To the, to the mind. You must come to goodness, then we see things as they are, and then we can uh, redraw, withdraw this power of autonomy. It's, that's very important. Yeah, yeah. Ratnam Prabhu, please. Uh, Hare Krishna, my, my one point really strike me in, in, in your today's lecture is that uh, without removing the anchor, we are just peddling. Is we are wasting the time and energy. We are really wasting the time and energy without because we are on the devotional path. Yeah. Without removing the anchor, we are just wasting. We are actually we are actually wasting time and energy, Maharaj. That's what I simply yes, say. Yes. Th that's what everything does in this material world. Just wasting time. So, thank you. A very important yeah. point. So Ambika writes, another word for material intelligence is ignorance, yes. And Koloka Fascini, at present stage my conscience is spontaneously act for my personal satisfaction. With intelligence I can understand I should work for Krishna's satisfaction. How to bring my consciousness spontaneously working for Krishna's happiness? Well, the main point there is that we have attachment and we like to do things in this world. That, so that's a kind of working for our own satisfaction. That, uh, but if we dovetail our desires in this world with the desire for Krishna, then gradually that will work out that we forget ourselves and Krishna becomes the center. So this is that dovetailing. Yeah? You like to be a, a big painter, paint for Krishna. You like to show your cooking, I'm a good cook, cook for Krishna. <laughs> and Krishna will take your pride away, will purify you, that um, you will become humble. So that's this is real intelligence and that otherwise yeah material intelligence we put ourselves in the center good Ajja Prabhu please Hare Krishna Maharaj Hare Krishna Maharaj Hare Krishna so Maharaj I thought you see that you know you can say reminder of something we, we learn every day uh, more detail here yeah. that we are all suffering sometime you know from warm weather, sometimes cold, sometimes some tribulation is always there. And then, uh, you know, a few more new things that I read here is, you know, even we are eating foods and it's causing sickness in the stomach. Sometimes it's high fever is there. You know, you can see all the time there is suffering. And, you know, in, in this suffering condition, we are, uh, you know, in, influenced by more so material nature, mode of passion especially making uh, you know hoping to make progress and then it's like mirage you know that miracle that that is like a deer is running and running and mm -hmm. running hoping to get water i'm i am running and running and running and after fruitive activities hoping to make progress hoping to get sukha but that is never never attained so until I have a mercy of the spiritual master and led into Krishna consciousness and start serving Krishna. 
I mean, get out of this fruity mentality of, of enjoying the fruits of, of my work and, and working hard so that I can, I can enjoy more. So I have to somehow get out of this tendency of fruity activities and situate myself in devotional service and live in an environment you know, where I interact with devotees and reminded of this transcendental message of going back home. Yeah, right. Especially, you must see that we are always engage in devotional service. That, uh, yeah. Because that's, if we are always busy with Krishna's business, we forget about ourselves. And uh, that's good. Mother Kanta, please. Um, Hare Krishna. Um, it's interesting how in the first verse, King Prachnabharti says that unfortunately I cannot understand uh, completely what you have what you have told, and he named the reason. He um, actually pro probably he understands more than he says, but because he knows the reason that uh, because I am overly attached to fruitive activities, and uh, it. It's interesting that we, what is preventing people or us from understanding the spiritual truth, yeah. our our material attachments. This is the impediment. Yeah, yeah, sure. Because the King Pachinabari is is a descendant of King of, of Dhruva Maharaj. And Narada Muni has fought. Yeah, I will bring all the descendants of the Ruh Maharaj back to Godhead. So he's preaching to King Prachinabari and then he will preach to he preaches to his sons, the pra, the, the, the Prachetas, that but King Prachinabari is, is very attached to this fruit if this jahyas for demigods where animals are killed. It's cruel. <laughs> that uh, and and uh, yeah, and that attachment, of course, this is an attachment is different from people in this world in the sense, uh, at least it's it, it's it's a goal to go to the higher planets and to be elevated to goodness, but still, he cannot understand because of this attachment, and thus therefore also the demigods cannot understand Krishna. They, st they understand he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but they can't have this, this, this deep relationship because they see him as a super soul and, and not as Bhagavan and they don't have this deeper knowledge or can't realize it. It's very, very difficult. So, the, the, so therefore the heavenly planet is not the place to go and that's, that is what now the moon he will explain further, yeah, that this these heavenly planets, it's just also a place of suffering. The same thing is there. And you make a little error in your practice and you must suffer so much also. You have ever heard about King Riga in the King Riga in the tenth canto Krishna book and so on. These are deep lessons to be learned and hearing it again and again makes us realize this, that, that, that yeah. Thank you. Uh, are there any personal experiences where you were completely in the situation of Puranjan? We were all in that situation probably, Puranjan. And how, how you came out of it? <laughs> that, uh, how did you come, come out of it? that uh, it's, we, we will all see it's due to meeting devotees or reading Prabhupada's books that, uh, so, that uh, so the mercy then we understand where the mercy is coming from that uh, good our time is nearly over I look forward to explore more deeply more tomorrow this chap the, 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 the next chapter, which is from verse 29 till 24. That, uh, so this is a s similar section 
that very interesting also references I noted. And we'll go to, go to it tomorrow. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Jai Prabhupada. Recording stopped.